Computing. Hello, we'll everybody. It's Dave Vellante back live, VMworld 2011, and uh, we are in day two in Vegas. I'm here with Stu Miniman. Stu, welcome. Dave. Now, as we've told you, we have these in-depth spotlights that we're doing this year at VMworld. Uh, there's, uh, many of them are sponsored segments, not all of them. Uh, we have a spotlight, it's an in-depth segment on Beyond Storage Virtualization. It's sponsored by HP, and we're going to go in-depth and look at storage virtualization, the impact that's had on the market and what's next, and then we're going to bring in uh, some customers, we've got uh, uh, an architect, CTO, we've got an independent panel, and we're going to look at this topic. We're going to talk a little bit about federated storage, too, but what I'd like to do is just take you through some of the data that we've captured in the Wikibon community. Uh, first of all, around storage virtualization and then set up a, a, a vision beyond that. Um, You've been following this market, you know, a lot of networking uh, activity, but you've seen what's happened in storage virtualization. Well, 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 right, Dave. I mean, if I think back on the trend, server virtualization really helped get greater utilization out of our resources, and it also broke a lot of the traditional infrastructure, like networking and storage. So uh, we, we've seen a lot of the big vendors and a lot of startups trying to fix that solution, get greater utilization out of what they're doing, and uh, you know, fix, in this case, the storage problem. Well, and what, what surprised me over the years was the degree to which servers were getting virtualized, but storage wasn't. So what I'd like to share with the audience, and we'll bring this up on a slide here, you know, let's talk about storage 101. And that's the utilization problem. And what we mean by that is traditionally spinning disks, some people call it spinning rust, have only been utilized at 20 to 40%. Now, right. Stu, we know why. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, uh, but the three big ones are that storage has to be allocated on contiguous space. That's right. a you know, 30, 40 year old sort of rule in storage. That's just the way you know, it works architecturally. And so once you allocate that space, very hard to move. And because of that, what do people do? They over-provision. But you've seen that. So I mean, what kind of rates have you seen in terms of utilization over the years? Oh, it's awful because uh, depending on how the configuration, a lot of time for performance, we're short stroking disks, so we've got a lot more capacity than we need, or you know, I have to add frames because I don't have enough cash. So architecturally, uh, things have been broken, uh, and, and virtualization's only improved, only made that worse. So the analogy I use of, of this whole notion of needing to lay down contiguous uh, 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 data it's like, imagine if you're laying a wood floor. Yeah. You ever do that in your home? You know, no, I hired a contractor for that, which is a whole I, separate I've issue. I've done it before, and it's, you know, I'm not that great at it, but one of the things that, that is key is you have a saw, yeah. and you can just fit whatever size board you need. If you have that much space left, you just cut the space and lay it in. Well, right. if you're laying a wood floor and you don't know, you don't have a saw, and you don't know what size is coming in, your floor is going to be filled up fast with a lot of empty space. Right. And you're going to be in big trouble. That's what happens with this. Imagine having to rip out the floor, reconfigure it, it's not worth it. So you just buy more disk. And so that's created this problem. So, so now, what I also want to share with the audience, and, and we'll bring this up on the, on the next slide, is that as you pointed out, uh, Stu, VMware and, and cloud adoption are really driving new storage requirements. It's taxed storage and people are screaming, customers are screaming for simpler storage. So you saw in the early 2000s, you had a number of disruptors. You had 3PAR, Compellent, Equalogic, Left Hand, and they really started attacking this problem. It was amazing innovation. You at the time were inside of EMC, yep. right? EMC was asleep at the wheel with all this stuff. You had Joe used to, Joe Chichi call them feature companies. Well, these feature companies have now been absorbed by these big whales. Well, right, right. We, we, we've seen the, the, the big companies uh, either try to be a fast follower or acquire that technology and bake it into their product. Or in some cases still, they have external appliances and multiple product lines. And uh, you know, of course, EMC is sometimes attacked as to having too many point solutions and have to cobble it all together. Well, so what's happened is that, that we've uh, seen these uh, uh, virtualized architectures were created. A ton of money went in. You know, uh, uh, as I say, Compellent and 3PAR most recently had huge exits. Um, and you see that business growing very, very fast. Uh, HP announced at its last uh, earnings, and we had Dave Scott on here before, he said that the combination of store once and 3PAR was triple digit growth. Now store once is tiny. Uh, you know, it's not, I say tiny, it's probably, I don't know, 10% of the market. Okay. 3PAR um, is relatively tiny, but they're now both growing very fast. So 3PAR, let's say, was a $200 million company. Let's say they're growing at you know, triple digits. We're talking about a four or 500 million run, run rate. Right. Getting to a billion a lot faster than they would have. I would expect the same thing is going to happen with Compellent at Dell. In fact, I have no doubt with that channel. So what it's doing is it's eating share away of that $20 billion external disk array marketplace. Right. Um, now, 
this next slide, is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit difficult for people to read, but the reason I put it up there is we did a study. David Floyer ran this. And now, Stu, what he did is he took metadata from the three-par phone home system. No, no customer data. Okay, it was just the metadata on the amount of data that was allocated versus written. So you could see, see what happened uh, previously with e existing architectures and how much more utilization they achieved with thin provisioning and virtualization. And this slide shows that 97% that of the customers saw some improvement in virtualization and 51% of the customers saw more than 150% utilization. Wow. So those figures are astounding. Yeah, abs absolutely. So people took notice and, uh, and and that really began to change the business and others have sort of hopped on that bandwagon. And the last thing I want to share uh, with the audience on, th on this slide is the business angle. So Stu, we've seen since uh, 19, uh, 2008, installed capacity has been up about about 3x within customer sites. But right, and, and VMware's driving a lot of that. Virtualization we know is, is just the, the uh, driver, it's the uh, the rising water that's uh, lifting all boats. And, in but the what's happened market. to headcount in that time? Yeah, right? of, of course, right. you know, budget uh, operational budgets are flat to negative, right. uh, and uh, you know, we, we know we, we need to be able to manage a lot more storage with with fewer headcount. And uh, so, yeah. there's that imperative. We got to do more with less. Everybody talks about it. Everybody hears it. And then you've seen strategic acquisitions by HP. Uh, uh, with, with Left Hand and, and 3PAR, by IBM with XIV, by, by, by Dell with Equalogic and now Compellent. And these companies are going hard after that, that opportunity. And so, now, what about the, 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 the title of this segment is Beyond Storage Virtualization? Because we've kind of been there and done that. You know? yeah. And that's been absorbed into a lot of different you know, large environments. So what's new? What we're seeing now, and Dave Scott talked about this, is new forms of innovation hitting, hitting the market. Federated storage, right? We saw EMC VPlex come out, which yeah. is a, 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 a virtualization layer, allows for heterogeneous uh, of, of, of storage and movement. Yeah, so, so I mean, the interesting thing about federation is, uh, actually I think the first time I ever heard the term uh, was before I joined Wikibon, you had written a definition of federated storage. Well, and I have and, a subset of that here. Yeah, so. and, and what I found really interesting is I'd spent you know, many years working on replication products, and uh, federation kind of eats into some of that because the challenge that, that we had in the industry, um, we talk about low utilization late rates, is when I'm replicating data, I've got one site that's active and the other sites that are unactive, and thereafter I have a lot of disk that just sits there unused. So for a lot of environments, what I want to have is especially in relatively close areas, I have two data centers, I want to use all of that capacity. So what we're talking about here is, is, is autonomous physical resources that are operated as a collection, managed as a collection, it simplifies migration, which is a big thing. This yeah. notion of perpetual migration without having to take the yeah, system I, down I, is, I, is I mean, so, so, and so, so we have to wrap, yeah. but um, but so the use cases, you know, you kind of see them up here. Go ahead, make your last yeah, point. Yeah, so, we'll so just what I was going to say, if you look back, you know, virtualizing storage isn't new. RAID itself was virtualizing a single array and it took multiple disks out there. Storage virtualization really takes that beyond the box and now stepping that over geography and eventually, you know, we're, we're just stretching that over disks. So, so we're going we're gonna to talk about that, we're going to talk to customers, we're going to talk to architects, uh, have, a, have a good discussion around um, uh, storage virtualization and federation, how people are doing that differently, what the use cases are, and we'll go in depth. Yeah, and so, I'd love to see the proof points out there. This is no longer a science project, this is the reality of what we're doing out here. Okay, so this is the storage spotlight on Beyond Virtualization. We're here, VMworld Live 2011. Uh, this is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and we'll be right back. <laughs>